Let's start off by talking about celebrities. Mm -hmm. Who is your favorite celebrity? My favorite is an actor called Shah Rukh Khan. He works in the Hindi film industry. He's been making movies since I was three years old, and I am slightly obsessed with him. Would you like to be a celebrity? Um, it would depend. I'm somebody that likes my privacy and anonymity quite a bit, so I wouldn't want to be so famous that I wasn't able to do the things that I like to do, normal, everyday things. But I would like to be so good in my field that I build a reputation for myself. Are there any celebrities that you do not like? There's quite a few. <laughs> can I say Donald Trump? I mean, there are certain things about him that I can respect, but overall, I, I would not find him likable in any way. He's a bad representation, I guess, for Americans or uh, worst president, I think, American president. Now let's talk about fashion. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite item of clothing? Um, jeans. I'm a jeans uh, light wash or mid to light wash denim jeans kind of girl. Um, it's very, it's something that you can wear in the day, it's something you can wear at night. It can be chic, it can be casual. It's, um, you don't have to think about it. It's just easy. Are there any traditional clothes in your country? Yes. India. India is, I mean, I may be biased when I say this, but I think we have the best traditional clothing. I mean, my favorite thing that the women wear is this piece of garment called a sari, which is, uh, I think it's five meters long. It's a, it's a piece of fabric that you drape around yourself and then over your shoulder. And I think it's so beautiful and elegant and classy. I may be biased, like I said, but I think it's the most stunning outfit a woman can wear. Do you ever buy clothes online? All the time. I, I, it's very rare that I purchase something in store. I mean, for the last maybe five years, I buy everything online. Now let's talk about colors. What colors do you like? Hmm, I'm quite a bright, again, maybe because I'm Indian, I, I gravitate to uh, almost every color. Red, blues, greens, purples, pinks, white. I mean, other than black, I'm, unless it's a car. Cars look great in black, but other than that, I would say every color of the rainbow I like. What's the most popular color in your country? That's tough. What's the most popular color? I guess it depends on the season. If it's, if we, or like it depends on the event. If we're talking about weddings, it's usually red. Um, if we talk about, I mean, a Hindu wedding is usually red. If it's a Christian wedding, then it's usually whites and blacks. Um, if it's, oh my God, it's every color. We, we try to wear as many colors as we can. Saffron, oranges, blues, greens. It depends on the occasion. It depends on, I wouldn't say there's one color that is supreme amongst the others. Do colors affect your mood? I think so. I think they do. I, I guess when I'm feeling gloomy and I put on a dark color, perhaps subconsciously to reflect my internal gloominess, um, it makes me feel probably more gloomy. But if I force myself to wear something bright when I'm not feeling so good, um, I think I'm able to absorb some of the energy off that color and feel perhaps a little better. Food that I learned to prepare, um, I'm pescatarian, so I don't eat meat, um, but I love food and I have a gluten intolerance, so I can't eat a lot of the Indian food. So this is a little recipe that I learned how to make, which is basically paneer. Um, we call it cottage cheese in English. Um, it's like a, it's like a spiced tomato base with cottage cheese, um, with paratha, roti, but it's made out of ragi flour, which is gluten-free and super rich in calcium and very good for people with diabetes, although I don't have diabetes. It's very nutritious, basically. Together, it's the perfect meal. It keeps you full. I, I love being healthy. I try to be as healthy as I can. So, um, yeah, that's probably my 
go-to meal in the evening because I don't have to think about, I have all the ingredients. I don't have to think about how to make it. It's kind of automatic and it's delicious, which is the most important part. It's not compromising on the taste because I can't eat salmon and rice every day. I want to eat something that's more um, flavorful and uh, nutritious. Sometimes when I'm feeling adventurous, I like to eat it with uh, yogurt, either Greek yogurt or regular yogurt, and add a couple Indian spices into it and mix it up. So the spiciness of the paneer, cottage cheese, um, the, the texture, like a drier, stiffer texture of the ragi roti, and the creaminess and coldness of the yogurt is match made in heaven. So we've been talking about a dish that you like to prepare. We're going to continue to talk about cooking and young people and cooking. What kind of things can children learn to cook? Hmm. To thank you for watching this video, I want to give you a free course that has helped thousands of students improve their IELTS speaking score. What it's going to do is take you through every single part of the test and give you strategies for part one, part two, and part three, and also allow you to practice at home for free and get feedback. To sign up for that for free, all you have to do is just click the link in the description. Thanks very much, and let's get back to the video. I'm trying to think about what's safe with the parents there, obviously, we're assuming. So if a child's going to be around the stove or an oven, let's say the parents are there. I think baking is very fun, um, especially little things like cookies that you can make shapes out of. Um, it's like a fun activity for parents and children to do together. Baking is good on the stove too, but I think that requires a little bit more precision. So kids should bake like Christmas cookies, probably. Do you think it's important for children to learn how to cook? Absolutely. Um, it's a survival skill, in my opinion. I personally think that you shouldn't treat it like a chore or treat it like something that you were forced to do because you have to do it forever. You don't know where you're going to be or what kind of situation even if you are surrounded by people that are good cooks and you perhaps don't feel like you need to cook yourself, it's always important to teach children from a young age to be able to kind of put a meal together because it's basic, it's survival. Now let's talk about working as a chef. Mm -hmm. What skills does a person need to be a great chef? Mm, interesting. I think... I mean, from what I've heard, I've never worked as a chef or worked in a kitchen before, but I think it takes a lot of trial and error. So for that reason, I would imagine that the person would have to be very patient. And with that patience, you need to have an inherent uh, passion for the food that you're making. I think chefs usually specialize in, in one or more cuisines. Um, so just having an understanding of the background of the spices, where it comes from, of the meat, where it comes from. If you're not passionate about that, it can probably tire you out to be that invested in learning. So patience, passion, and a good environment, like access to good teachers, access to good books, access to good produce would probably help you hone your craft a lot more. How enjoyable do you think it would be to work as a professional chef? Hmm. I think that would be completely dependent on the environment that you're in. I imagine it would be a very stressful job if you worked in a Michelin star restaurant, for instance. Um, but then if you had a food truck and you sold tacos and you had a bunch of happy children and happy families coming around, I guess the environment would be completely different. Um, I, again, I would say it wouldn't be the same across the board. It would depend on where you worked, what kind of restaurant, uh, how many people come there, what kind of food do you make on a daily basis, what kind of preparation. So I think it would be different for everybody. That's the end of the speaking test. Well done. Thank you.